What's going on everyone? This is Smitty here. Not going to be before you guys long. Just want to mention a few things here real quick. This is NBA 2K14 on PC. And if you guys, you know, if you already have the game and you don't know where to go to get some mods, I'm going to give you the information to get these mods. Definitely, I strongly recommend downloading these roster mods. It adds so much more value in regards to this game in particular. Um... A lot of throwback value, especially for me, growing up through the 80s and 90s. Like I could definitely revisit that with these rosters, no doubt. So I definitely love that. But you guys are gonna see uh, the presentation overlays as well as the telecast quality differences. You're gonna see that from the 60s all the way up till now with the gameplay clips that I have coming here in a moment. But I had saw from Virtual Footballer's vid, and I'm going to link his vid in the description too, as well as all the information where you could get the mods and the rosters and all. But I saw that some people wanted to see some of the new jerseys. So I have some gameplay clips showcasing that. But if there are any matchups in particular that you guys would like to see, let me know in the comment section, and I'll definitely put some montages together for you guys so that you guys can see the gameplay, you know, from if it's a different, you know, if it's current or if it's from the past as well. So just let me know, and I'll let you guys know in the description what teams I use for the particular clips progressively here. Some people may remember, some people may not, but nevertheless, this is a great history, you know, this is a lot of nostalgia here and once again adding a ton of replay value with these community mods here so I greatly appreciate all the work done all together but um, enough chit chat that's all I got to say until the next time guys like comment subscribe and you know till the next time peace kicks it to one On the wing, Jackson into Will Chamberlain. And down it goes, jamming that one home. You know, for a player with his explosiveness, that was ATM time. Cash <laughs> money, the easy way. Yeah, that kind of defense is not going to cut it against him. Cash money, I like that, Clark. Well, Clark, as you said, with Rondo and the Celtics, they would go on to win the next seven right after his injury, and overall, Steve played better than expected the rest of the way. Sometimes that's the way these things go, Kevin. A star player goes down, everybody else kind of steps up, and uh, instead of feeling sorry for themselves, they use it as a rallying front. And all those role players for Boston really picked up the extra slack, and I thought they made a great push uh, to end that season after the Rondo injury. The Celtics shooting their first free throws of the game. First one falls for them. I think it's fair to say that the top of the Eastern Conference has been getting tougher over the last few seasons. Unfortunately for the Sixers, they've headed the other direction. They've been going south, and part of why they were on the outside of the playoffs looking in. And now Doris Burke has an update from the sidelines. I was able to catch up with the head coach of the 76ers. The coach had no qualms with telling me that he wants to get into a defensive battle. He said, we know if the game slows down and points are tough to come by, we'll be at the advantage. That's the kind of game that we want to get into here because we feel we're better suited for it. We'll see if things shape up. So off the tip, it's New York. Now Monroe kicks to DeBusher. Frazier dishes to Monroe. A pass to DeBusher. Feeds to Bradley. Monroe down to five on the shot clock. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. Well, Detroit has always been one of those teams you think of when it comes to franchises that epitomize the rough and tough Eastern Conference. Always look to be a tough defensive team, and they might not have the flashiest players, but they have some of the toughest, no doubt. And the first one drops. And Clark, as you said, the Pistons were strong against the rest of the East last year. Didn't give away too many games, and 25 of their 29 wins came against Eastern opponents. Yeah, they took advantage of the weaker conference, for sure. But uh, it just shows you how much growth they have ahead of them, because in order to get to the playoffs, they're going to have to have a good record against the West as well. Adams outside. The basket drops, and he gets fouled on the shot. One free throw coming his way. 
Well, he earned that one. Took the hit and still found a way to knock it down. Yeah, fantastic body control. And the will to get it done. You like that focus. And that one misses. A lot of high hopes for the Knicks in last year's playoffs. They started off so hot, but then let the series against Boston drag on and on and eventually went to seven games and they fell to the Pacers in the second round after that. And the Boston series did drag on, you could tell. You wonder if they were a bit fatigued going into that Pacers series. Steve Indiana just outplayed him, outworked him. In, in every way in the second round. Yeah, I think it was a factor, Kevin, and really the Knicks have only themselves to blame. They had Boston down 3-1 and a home game to close it out, but they couldn't get it done, and there's no doubt that that affected them against Indiana in the next series. And the Pistons with possession here. It's a three-point game. Lanier, Reed covering, puts up the baby hook. Uses the glass that time, and it's good. On defense, Detroit. Doris Burke has an update for us. Doris? Kevin, thank you. I spoke with the Pistons head coach for just a bit. He said that he and the assistants really carefully picked over the game plan, going up against a top-tier defense. I asked him their plan of attack, and he told me that he didn't want to get into specifics, but that we could trust that they'd give their best scores ample opportunity to get their shots and that he expected motion and hustle from their role players. Kevin, back to you. Thanks a lot, Doris. And dealing with the sort of defense they're facing is not an easy challenge. No, but they've got a few weapons of their own that they can counter with, so it's not exactly a one-sided battle. Maybe so, Steve, but those weapons are still going to have to perform at a really high level for them to have a chance to be successful. Monroe, no good. The Pistons have gotten their first three shots to go in for them to start off this game. And a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. Detroit really is one of the younger teams in the league as far as their core and future are concerned. It's always nice to kind of think, what might they become going forward? But they are going to struggle at times, especially on the road. Pistons did have big problems getting wins on the road, and that is one of the reasons why the fans were a bit front for the Rockets. You look at how that strategy worked out for them, and it was exactly what they needed. Got off to a quick start last year, and... You know, Steve, toward the end, their rookies were fresh and able to contribute when it mattered most. You know, Kevin, it's hard for fans to see a player get drafted and not immediately see the floor, but a lot of times that's the best route. You know, you, you give it a player time to adjust, you make him earn it, and by the end of the season, he can be a, a very effective player. I think uh, plenty of the Rockets players proved that uh, last season. And so it's Houston with it after the miss from Ellis. Five to shoot. Houston needs to get a shot. McCray, and it's off target. Not sure why he took that one. On defense, Houston. And in the first, a little over a minute and a half in. Here's McDaniel. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my huge play. The rim right now. Just a remarkable jam. These fans' jaws are on the ground right now. Yeah, that is showtime stuff right there. Major highlight reel material. For Houston, they've gone two or three here to start out the game. Let's find out what Doris Burke has for us. Thank you, Kevin. I caught up with the Sonics head coach. He told me that to him, what he is most proud of is how smart the team is playing. He said, I can forgive. And it's Rodman in at the portion. And for Philadelphia. Allen Iverson out there with Jerry Stackhouse. We've got Williams. They'll be watching him boxing out and maneuvering for the easy baskets inside. They'll be counting certainly on his production. And it's Coleman in the power four. Just four to shoot. Stackhouse. Good. They get the first bucket of the game there. And I think it's going to be a good one. Boy, 76 has had a season they'd like to soon forget. But the one thing they were able to do last year was win at home. Good thing, too, given how... Unreal. Mark it up. Nasty. Absolutely filthy. And the building is stunned, partner. He dug deep into his bag of tricks there. I hope he keeps that one handy. I want to see that again. Iverson passes to Coleman. Iverson. That's a quick foul to pick up here in the opening quarter. That's his first personal foul. First team foul. He kicks to Stackhouse, and Jordan with the block. 
Iverson with the block. And they get it back. Outside Harper. Pass to Jordan. That doesn't go either for Jordan. Passing really sets him apart. Their offense runs best when it goes through his hands. So pressuring him and staying vigilant is essential for us. Guys, can they slow him down? Thanks, Doris. A big step forward once again for Jeff Teague last season. He continued to up his scoring and assist totals and had one of his best years from the free throw line to date. And Steve back to Teague, he's working on that outside shooting, but as a point guard, you know, Clark, he's very effective around the rim. But those little in-between shots you like so much. Kevin, I love the arsenal he has, and every point guard needs to have those runners, floaters, flippers, I call them. You've got to have that. You're not always going to be able to get to the rim against such, you know, against bigger guys. And um, Steve also mentioned his good free throw percentage, so the more he can get himself to the line, the better for him and his team. And he makes good on the way. Boy, the floor really opened up for him there. He sure did. I mean, that was a very late reaction from the defense there. Carter Williams dishes to Parker. Passes to Carter Williams. That drops, and it comes off an assist from Parker. Carter Williams has got five now. Now Jordan has a nine and a half foot standing reach. And then you combine that with outstanding leaping ability. And you can see why Jordan can be such a, a lethal defender. Yeah, very true, Steve. It's even tougher if you're the one trying to do the shot. Though. You have such great length and, and leaping ability that, that trying to go up and, and swat him is just asking to be put on a poster. And here is Los Angeles now. It's a three-point game. Paul gets a screen from Griffin. Paul passes to Griffin. And he says, back at you with a big dunk of his own. Make it two hands for safety. That's what they say, right, Kevin? Yeah, that's right. You got it. And he was also safe for that dunk. <laughs> no reason not well, to be. He might as well remove all down, right? Now, here's Roten. The feed to Noel. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. Erlens Noel, one of those players that has become so valuable in the NBA. A mobile defender who can get out to the perimeter, guard smaller players, but still with the ability to block shots in the paint. And for Noel, his offensive game is a bit of a work in progress, but I know Clark, you love his mode. I certainly do. You know, at Kentucky, they started tracking players' heart rates during practices to measure effort. And they never had to call out Noel in that regard. He's all effort all the time. And Reddick kicks to Jordan. He's against Okafor. Jordan dishes to Griffin. Last year, Blake's stats were down, but I thought his impact on the floor was about the same. With that said, in order for him to really take the next step, he's got to be able to knock down the perimeter shot with consistency. The Clippers shooting their third and fourth free throw attempts of the game. He hits the second from the line. The Clippers on defense. Just about two minutes into the game. First quarter of basketball. There's no... Oh, look out! Oh, 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 oh. The rim rattler. Just a remarkable jam. These fans' jaws are on the ground right now. Yeah, that is showtime stuff right there. Major highlight reel material. And here is Los Angeles now, trailing by four. Doris Burke has an update for us. Doris? I was able to catch up with the head coach of the 76ers. I asked him about the challenge of containing Chris Paul, and he said, well, he's one of the best in the business, maybe the best. There's really...